Hi Taurus, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your April 16th to the 30th, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. Now before I dive into everything, I just want to say that these readings are focusing on love, light, and positivity to raise us up instead of bringing us down because Lord knows that there is enough going around right now to make us scared and to really bring our energy vibration down to a low level, to a overwhelmed and very negative level. So this is here to build us up and to have us moving forward in yeah, in the great in the grace of love and of light. All right, so let's get started. Going to be starting with your spirit guide animal cards. These are also going to be your totem animals for this time. So if you see these animals in the wild or you see an image of them, this is really your angels and your spirit guides tapping you on the on the shoulder Taurus and saying, remember this message. So let's see now, angel and spirit guide message. Oh goodness. For Taurus, should we just go with these? Cause that's so very odd. Yeah, definitely. And these were already shuffled and meditated on beforehand, so the fact that I have two that are just standing upright like that is absolutely beautiful. I love the brown bear spirit for you guys. It says, take time out. And then we have the coyote spirit, which says, trust in divine detours. And isn't this time period just a divine detour? So let's look here at what your spirit guide has to say about your chakras, your spirit guide and your angels, angel and spirit guide message for Taurus, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Taurus, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. All right. So we have relationships, which some of our relationships are being tested, yes, at this time, but we're also building deeper, more profound bonds. And then you have holistic health, which means, you know, how are you doing? That's what it means. How are you doing? Are you taking care of yourself? You know, are you listening to you? And also making sure that you can do little things to keep, to keep you healthy, to keep you moving forward. You know, getting enough sleep, I'm seeing here as being very important. Also surrounding yourself with positivity instead of being dragged down. It's kind of like surround yourself with things that make you laugh. Surround yourself with beautiful things. Oh, Taurus, the beauty in things is going to be so important to you. Angel and spirit guide message for Taurus, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Angel and spirit guide message for Taurus, April 16th to the 30th, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Oh, goodness. All right. So at the center of everything, we have the Queen of Pentacles, and you just jumped out. You were like, I'm here, I need to be heard, and you are moving forward in prosperity. So that is glorious. You're crowned by the Eight of Cups. Man, that makes perfect sense. The Seven of Pentacles. The seven of wands, so the repeat of the number seven is saying the truth is going to be really important during this time for you. The truth is always important for you, Taurus. You're taking that gift of, of the ace of pentacles. Oh, that's awesome. You have the tower. That's okay. Things are changing. The high priestess. Oh, you do so great with the high priestess energy. The ace of wands. The queen of wands, oh my gosh, you have two powerful earthly queens right at your heart. You have your angels right there giving you this gift of blessings and prosperity. This is powerful. Oh my gosh. This is powerful. And you're going to sit there and be like, because here it's like, okay, I'm moving away from something. Everything is changing. I don't feel powerful. I feel like things have been taken out of my control and moved forward in chaos. You know, what are you talking about, Dane? But this is like, sometimes... Some things just have to be demolished in order to be rebuilt stronger and better than ever before. And that's what you are doing. That's what's going on here. Your angels and your spirit guides are really saying you are being rebuilt stronger and better than ever before. You are being challenged. You are being pushed out of your comfort zone. And I mean, who likes that? Nobody does. Nobody does. But here it's like, yeah, now's your time. 
now's your time to move forward in passion and in creativity. You are taking these divine gifts. Your angels are right there with you and you're really making some huge changes. Like for some of you, you are remapping everything because you have here the coyote spirit and the coyote spirit says, trust in divine detours. And you are, you're like, okay, I see, I see what's going on. Everything's changing. Everything's moving forward in a direction that I hadn't anticipated, that I hadn't seen, you know, but I'm trusting in this divine detour. And as you are trusting, you take the time out to plant the seeds over your heart, to plant the seeds of your heart's, you know, joy is what I'm seeing here, of your heart's power. And it's like, oh yeah, now, oh yeah, now's the time. Let's go for it. It's kind of like, bring it. I'm ready. And that's what I see here because you're like this mama bear. And why I say mama bear is because mama bears with their cubs, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, they are fierce. They are absolutely fierce. Like people will actually tell you if you live somewhere where there are bears and they'll be like, okay, we just saw a cub walking around. Don't go outside. You know, don't walk your dog. Don't do this because the mama's going to be, the mama's not far behind. And she's just going to be focused on getting that baby bear and making sure that baby bear is safe. So there's something here Taurus, that you are very focused on. It can be the safety of your family. It can be the safety of those you love, you know, those who have become like family to you. But it's this focus and its power and it's planting the intentions that last generations, that move forward, or at least one generation, where you're like, yeah, this is it. And as you do so, you have your sacral and your root chakra shining through. So this can mean heightened sexual energy, but also heightened creative energy. So definitely utilize this relationships, kissing, coming together. It's like, I love this. It's like, yes, I love this. And it's falling in love again. You know, it's looking at, at your world, at your, at your choices. And it can be, you know, walking away from something for some, it might be like, okay, you know, things are being tested and this isn't where I want to be. Or for a lot of you, I mean, this relationship is like, yeah, this is my place. This is my space. Because for you, Taurus, it is love and stability. Those are your key factors. I mean, that's why you're the Hierophant. The Hierophant is represented by the Pope in the, in the Major Arcana, you know? So the Hierophant represents love, you know, because the Pope is supposed to love his religion and love God above all else, right? You know, whether you agree with that or not, you know, that's what they're supposed to be. And then you have stability, the center of the church, the center, the voice piece of God. And so here you are embracing that, that energy is what's super important to you. If you break down every single, you can break down every single zodiac sign to the card that represents, represents them in the major arcana. And with your love, with your relationships, with your, your passion, you are standing your ground, you are knowing your truth and the holistic health is saying, yes, be smart about things, you know, do what is being said and what is being advised and make sure you're taking your medicine and make sure you're taking care of yourself, but also make sure you're taking care of your emotional state. Why is that so important? Because I am of the firm belief that we are emotional beings. And as emotional beings, we need to connect with our hearts. And that's usually the first thing we say, oh, like, oh no, I'm fine. You know, I'm fine. It's good. You know, you smile, but you don't really smile. You know, the silent desperation within the eyes, you know, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. Here with the holistic health, it's like, okay, look at you and be in tune with your emotions. Like look and be honest with yourself. If you're feeling overwhelmed, let people know. And also do not, you know, underestimate the power of talking to somebody. It can be talking to somebody professionally, but it can also be just talking to a friend, like actually picking up the phone and being like, hello, I haven't heard your voice in quite some time. And that's going to be important. The cadence of a person's voice is going to be so important to you. And at your root, the root to your success during this time is taking care of you. Because I see very much, it's, it's very much the energy of, of the moon coming in where you're going to sit there and think, okay, you know, relationships, that's the Libra full moon, you know, and then the holistic health. It's like, I'll take care of everybody else and I'll forget to take care of me. It's going to be so easy for you, Taurus. So easy. You're going to be like, oh no, I got this. Oh no, I'll do this. And there's such power to you that people aren't even going to think twice. They're going to be like, oh yeah, you totally got this. And they're going to sit there and be like, wow, Taurus, you're just so much stronger than I am. You know, you're so much better at this. Really? <laughs> it's like, no, the person who is better at handling drama is just the person who says, I'm not going to let it define me. 
And so the person who says, oh, no, I'm not good at this, they should be the one handling it because they're going to have to be. And just because you sit there and you say, like, you know, this is what needs to be done. And you're going to really have, I mean, I'm seeing the moon really, really, really affecting you. So around the 22nd, that's where the new moon in Taurus comes in. So that's going to be a time where you're really thinking like, you know, oh, I got this, I can, I can handle everything, or I'm looking at things, you know, in a new light, in a new way, looking at new beginnings. But you're also bringing a lot of, of old weight upon your shoulder, you know, and now you're sitting there and you need to say, I'm freeing myself of this. I'm not, I'm not going to be, you know, the person who carries this all the time. And it, it can be delegation, but it can also be simply saying, you know, no, no, I do my part, yes, but I'm not going to sit there and be defined by others. I'm defining myself. And it's in a very positive way. It's not in a mean, angry way, but you are putting your foot down. And it's like, okay, this is my truth. You know, this is me being kind. Because kind is akin to the word kin. You know, it's connecting with what is needed. And it's being kind to yourself. It's connecting with what you need at your roots. That's why your roots are coming through and really need that healing, beautiful energy. And you have the Queen of Pentacles, that's you. You're holding this gift that's at your roots of prosperity and power and bounty. And then here at your crown, you're holding this gift of new beginnings, of passion, of creativity. This is a time where, I mean, you want to get things done, Taurus? Now's the time. It's like, now's your time. And you might sit there and say, okay, Dane, this is great. You know, now's the time to get things done. Now's the time to move forward. Are you kidding me? You know, my state's locked down. You know, <laughs> what do you do? And you might be saying that. You might be saying, I've been furloughed. I've been laid off. I've been this. I've been that. There's so much stress upon my shoulders. This is saying there's something. And I don't know exactly what that something is because it's individual for each and every one of you. But there's power in you. And there's untapped potential that you are going to be looking at now. And you're going to be a queen. Now, why is it important that you are a queen and not a king? I see queens as being the directors behind the scenes. Kings, actors upon the stage. This is a time where you are taking everything in. You're looking at the bigger picture. You're looking at the bigger theme. You're looking at your greater power. You take it in. And then you move forward. Determination, dedication. Seeds are planted. The sun. Okay, this is the earth and this is the sun. Directionally, this is north and this is south. So at times, you're going to feel like you are polar opposites of yourself at times. You can also be working really well with a fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. All right? So here, at your heart, you're being pulled in two different directions. They have the same end goal. So you might have to step back and be like, okay, I need to take this in. I need to see why. I need to look at the bigger picture. And then I move forward. Because you are unstoppable. And for me, pentacles and wands, earthly plane, prosperity, creativity, passion. This is what drives us. This is what gets us out of bed every single day, wands. Okay? Heightened creative energy is around you. Heightened potential is around you. And you're walking away from something. I mean, my goodness. Taurus, you're like, no, I'm sorry, but I'm done. And it can be an old mindset. It can be an end of a relationship, yes. It can be, you know, looking at something anew. It can be an old role is kind of dying away and new, new opportunities are coming forward. And you're like, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, you might really be making some, because you have the tower here, some life-changing decisions are being brought before you. And this is what you thought you loved. Like, this is what you thought you wanted. And now you're looking at things and saying, oh, man, no. And it's kind of like, okay, so I'm going to share with you my personal dream. When I was younger, I always wanted for people to sit there and be like, wow, she made it, you know? And so that meant the big house, the fleshy car, the everything like that. Now, is that my dream now? No. Was that my teenage dream? Yeah. <laughs> the bigger, the better. And now it's like a cottage by the water, with a beautiful garden, and to be happy and listen to the birds sing. I mean, that's it. And that's, yeah, I just felt that like, <sighs> that's what I'm seeing for you. It's like you might be very much simplifying things. What is it that I want? 
Where is it that I need to be? How is it that I want to move forward for me? Now, if you have responsibilities, I mean, I am a firm believer in responsibilities. So you take care of what needs to be taken care of because that makes you who you are. And that gives you something. That gives you something that people who run away, they don't have. And here you're changing the game, but you're changing it to your terms. And as you do so, you see how she's holding a wand or he's holding a wand, whomever this cloaked figure is. And you see how you have this wand. It's like, this is your guide. This is your guide as you're moving towards greatness. And this is your guide as you're embracing more than yourself. This is you. And you get this gift of passion, of creativity, of power, and of understanding. And you take it, and it leads you with the sunflower right here. It leads you to a new dawn and a new day. And also, the way I see the Queen of Wands is very much like the goddess Heket. In Greek mythology, she was the goddess of magic. And if you have friends who are Wiccan, which, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to, to have friends of all faiths and who are Wiccan, and they talk about Heket with such reverence and such mystery. And so there's a reverent mystery to the magic that lies within you. Now, I see magic personally as the God's head hidden within us. And as we look at that God's head, as we look at who we can be, at the potential planted within us, okay, that's the seeds right here, and the passion for them to grow, we start to see our magic coming forward. It can be conjuring magic, if that's what you believe, and it can be, you know, that God said, it can be both, if that's you. And then you sit there with the potential, the possibilities, and you're like, well, damn. I mean, seriously. And it's like opening up a dam, a literal, a literal one, and the water comes rushing forward, and it can be the water of emotions, the water of doubts, the cleansing waters of prosperity, and it brings you prosperity. It has you moving through the gates and it has your angels around you. And they're saying, don't worry, I got you. And you might sit there and be like, oh yeah, I, I feel like you don't. <laughs> like, are you doing your job, angels? Because um, I think you're not. And that's going to be how you feel at times when things are changing, when things are building momentum, where you feel kind of like you're on the outside looking in. But I want you to know your angels have you wrapped in their wings and their arms around you. It's like, I got you. I got you. And as they have you, you are moving forward towards prosperity, towards blessings, towards more. You are walking through the gates. And it's like, yeah, this is my time. This is where I need to be. And as you walk through these gates, oh man, you have the tower. I mean, and the tower, people go, oh no, not the tower. You know, anything but the tower. The tower isn't bad. I mean, it isn't necessarily good. It's kind of like an indiscriminatory change. We never evolve if we do not change. Every seven years, right, it is said that we shed our skin and we are a completely different person. So here with the tower, everything is changing. Everything is becoming. And it might feel like your world has been shaken to its very core. And you might be sitting there looking at things and just seeing rubble. And that's the first step, right? Change is grief. And isn't it said that if, when we decide to change our lives, it is because we cannot bear where we are anymore. The fear of the unknown becomes less than the fear of where we are right now. And that's when we make the greatest change. That's when we look at things and say, I can't do this. And you're going to sit there and say, there's something here. And it's like, I can't do this anymore. And it can be something that is benign to other people. Like they'll look at it and be like, well, Taurus, why are you taking this so seriously? I mean, this is nothing. To you, it only matters how you perceive it. And this is a change that rocks your world. But this is like that mama bird pushing the baby bird out of the nest and saying, fly. Because you have to fly. And you are going to fly. Are you going to fall? Yeah. Didn't Steve Harvey say, if you jump, and if you go after your dreams, the one thing he can assure you is that you will fall down, is that you will fail. And that's from somebody who has a mansion, like has steps up to their home, and you're like, what, it looks like a palace. All right? Know that falling is part of living. And we like to tell people it isn't. And I think that's rather cruel, actually. I know people get mad at me, and they say, Dane, you know, that's not nice. You know, everything can align, and everything can just happen. 
okay, that's cool. And it can, and it does sometimes. And in other times, it just doesn't. So you don't want to sit there with like your thumb up your nose being like, oh, it's, it's going to happen. Prepare. And look at the change and look at why. Look at why. And look at why divinity is guiding you this way. Because you're standing your ground. You're defending yourself. And the cool thing about the seven of wands is that it has this dual meaning to it, as, as all things do, right? And you have this repeat of the number seven, so it's about your truth coming forward. And that's really what you're, you're looking at here with the tower. It's like your truth is coming forward in such a profound and powerful way that it's shaking your very foundation. And it's changing things up. And you're being pushed out of your comfort zone by the angels that are protecting you. But they're also moving you. And so here, you have yourself, you know, embracing truth. You will not stand for lies. From those who are around you, you'll be like, listen, I might not want to hear it, but I want to hear the truth. Like, I want to know the truth. And with yourself, you're going to be the same thing to your, do the same thing to yourself. I might not want to hear it, but I want to know the truth. I need to. And as you move forward in this passion and in this understanding, you're going to want other people to agree. You know, you're going to sit there. And because we are such social creatures, we want people, when we see this beauty, when we see this passion, when we have these revelations, we want people to applaud us. We want people to, you know, understand us. It's like my, my little nephew. Every time he does something, he sits there and he claps for himself and everybody claps for him and he's so pleased. That's what we want. We really do. We want that. It makes us feel so good. And then on the flip side, this is saying stand your ground when you have the enemy attacking, when you have those who will never applaud you. They will never understand you. You may just be so innately different from them that what you see as your truth is their worst nightmare. What you see as your passion is their idea of failure. And that's, that's fine. And you say, okay, that's you, but this is me. And you stand before your palace. Your palace can be that huge mansion if that's what you want. Or it could be that cottage by the sea. You know, you get to choose. They don't get to choose for you. They just don't. It leads you to your passion, to your creativity. It leads you to your angels being like, yeah, I got you, Taurus. Because they do. And it does not mean when it is said that your angels have you. And when your angels and your spirit guides say, I have you. It does not mean they will not let you fall. It's kind of like teaching a kid how to walk. They fall so much. And if you sit there every time that they fall and you go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You fell down. I'm so sorry. You know, they get scared. They learn to cry every time they fall down. And if you go, yay, good job. Now get up. Try again. They know to get up and try again. And that's what I'm seeing here. It's like, yeah, it's time because you have this inner wisdom. You have this light shining within and you have the pomegranate. Now, why is the pomegranate important? First of all, pomegranate's delicious highly nutritious for you too. But think of Persephone. Persephone ate one pomegranate seed and she had to spend half her life in the underworld and half her life with her mother Demeter on, on the earth. So here you have that balance. You have that balance between the darkness of the underworld and the beauty of the light. Now why, do, why are we afraid of darkness? Why do we sit there and use darkness as a negative term? Because we're sight hunters. We are one of the apex predators when it comes to sight hunting. Right? And the only animals that are better than us are birds of prey. So that's super cool. And that's why light is so important because you can't hunt and you don't see birds of prey unless they're owls hunting in the dark. So here, there's an embrace of the dark. It's knowing that if you are the queen of the underworld, your population is only ever going to keep on growing. That's it. Hades had more to rule over than his counterparts could ever imagine. And so there is a power to you. There is a wisdom to you. There is a beauty to you. Because you are seeing that endings don't mean endings. And you're also connecting with a spiritual truth that guides you forward. And as you do so, this is also the veil being lifted from your eyes. This is having insights and understandings that others can only imagine. And it leads you to planting your seeds and tending your garden. Why is that important? 
Because everybody's life is their own garden. What do you choose to plant? What do you want? Here, you are looking for your future. You are looking at your future. And it's like, is it ready to pick this yet? Is it ready to move forward? It's saying, a little bit more time. Okay? You have another sunflower here, which is showing new dawns, new days, moving ahead in beauty and prosperity. And as you do so, you take this gift of passion, you take this determination, and you move forward in it. And there's this sense of might to you. There's also a strong connection. Again, fire sign, energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. If this is within your chart, it's shining bright. And it's listening to that aspect of yourself. If this is a person that you know, this m person might not be a person that you like. You know, sometimes we learn the best lessons from people that we slightly abhorred. And you're like, oh my gosh, please stop talking. But sometimes it is very valuable. And actually a lot of times it's very valuable to listen to people who have completely different opinions than us. Because if we only listen to people who think just like we do, we never grow, we never expand. And sometimes that knowledge that somebody has that differs from yours can shake your foundation and have you moving forward in a way you hadn't expected. And it's like, wow. The seeds that you have planted that are at your roots, that you have planted and your angels have watched over, they're coming. They're coming, but so is a change that is breathtaking and that is redefining you. Your subconscious message for this time is the Hierophant. It is you. This is you standing in your power. This is going to be a time of truth. This is also going to be a time where you cannot go against your nature, even if you wanted to, Taurus. So people might be sitting there and saying, oh, you know, lighten up. You don't do lightened up really well. You do intense. You do beautiful. You do sensual. You do caring and compassionate. But if they want somebody who's just like this kind of butterfly on the wind, that's not you. Nor do you have really any desire to be. And so here, it's like, I am not dandelion fluff. I am so much more. And you're embracing that. And it's really shining through. And you are so powerful that it, it's actually like, like giving me goosebumps a bit. Like It's like, you're so powerful that once you put your mind to something, Taurus, it's like, this is it. This is what I want. This is where I'm going. And this is what I'm getting. And it's giving me chills. Goosebumps and chills. And it's like, wow. Wow. Your chakra message is family. Again, your root chakra shining through. Family is important to you. Either family, like biological family, or those who have become like family to you. It's like, I'm there. But remember, this is about your gifts, your prosperity, your power shining. Do not give and sacrifice everything you are for everything you want them to be. And that might sound mean, but it's very much like I see the plane, you know, in, in a plane where they tell you, put the mask on yourself first and then put the mask on everybody else that needs you. It's like, take care of you first, Taurus. And then you will be able to better aid those around you. And it'll be beautiful. It'll be beautiful. What you are able to accomplish during this time will shock you. It will. It will be like, what? Are you kidding me? And it can just be like just getting things in order, kind of like dominoes. And then you like hit it down and you're like, I got this. And it might take you on a different road than you ever expected. And that's cool. That's cool because it's exciting. You know, you are embracing the divine detours of life. And you're like, yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes things just happen and life's crazy. Your subconscious message where your spirit animal is the rhino. And this says, overcome any obstacles. And that's what you're doing. You're overcoming any and every obstacle that has been put in your way. And you're like, no, man, I got this. Because you do. And there's a stubborn determination to you. But there's also a beauty and a bounty to you that is breathtaking. Embrace it. And don't lose faith in yourself. Because there is this change that's coming in. You know, you have the eight of cups and you have the tower. And this is like, you know, can I do this? Can I move forward this way? You know, do I know what I want? And it's like, yeah, instinctually you do. So even if you sit there and say, I'm confused, I'm overwhelmed, I don't know. This is where the holistic health comes in. It's time to listen to your heart. 
it's time to listen to your soul. And as you do so, you find yourself moving forward with empowerment and with dedication. And dedication to the empowerment of yourself now, but yourself in the future. To say, I am strength and I am beauty. All right, Taurus, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. It was an absolute pleasure to bring you this reading. It's so powerful. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. I hope you are staying safe. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all. Bye.